any problems. Bangkok, a bustling metropolis, a city of around 10 million people, the capital of Thailand, with so much to see, do and eat. Beautiful architecture and an amazing complex just north of the city, which used to be part of the 1998 Asian Games sports complex. It's the Impact Arena, and one of the biggest of its kind in, South, in Asia, with uh, exhibition and conference centers. It's also the host venue for the Total Energies BWF Thomas and Uber Cup Finals 2022. And just in a short while, we'll have the semi-finals as Japan do battle with Korea. Following that in the evening, it's the Thomas Cup semi-finals and Indonesia versus Japan. All that is happening on court two. Lots of excitement as to what's coming up here. Fans having thronging this venue, plenty of noise, so much excitement and lots of drama. We were here till past midnight last night, finishing off those quarterfinals to secure a place in the final four. And it was not short on all that you'd expect in a quarterfinal. Thrills and spills, a little bit of controversy as well thrown in and lots and lots of emotion. So this is the Uber Cup draw with Japan having disposed of uh, Chinese Taipei in straight games, straight matches, I should say. And Korea also through Japan now 20 Defense! times, 26 times they've been here and they have won this competition on six occasions. That's the second best just after China with three runners up positions. For South Korea, this is their 20th appearance here. They've won it before in 2010, and they too have been runners up seven times. This is our order of play today, and it's a blockbuster clash that gets us underway. First off, it's world number one, Akane Yamaguchi. She's up against An Suyong, a big star of Korean badminton. Then we move into the the doubles, Nami Matsuyama and Chiharu Shida will take on a very reliable pair of Lee so -hee and Shin Seung Chan. Nozomi Okuhara then takes on Kim Ga Eun. And then Yuki Fukushima and Mayu Motsumoto will be up against Kim Hai Jong and Kong Hee Yong. And finally, if it's required, Sayaka Takahashi and Sim Yu Jin will do battle. Remember, you can win this if you take your first three matches. It doesn't have to go all the way to five. So to get us underway, as I said, the big clash here in the women's singles, Akane Yamaguchi of Japan takes on Korea's An Se Young. Well, as we await the players to come on, I'm delighted to say with me in the commentary position right in front of court two, I'm joined by Bobby Griffin, the former world number one and former European champion of Power Badminton. Really good to have you with us, Bobby. What a week we've had here. Shares, it's incredible to be here again. It's great to be in Bangkok. Uh, it's great to be at the Thomas and Uber Cup finals. Uh, it's been incredible. The late nights, I mean, you've <laughs> yes. put in such <laughs> an effort this week, Shares. Uh, congratulations on your work. I mean, it's been just awesome to see some of this level, but I'm really, oh, oh, really excited B by today. Japan versus Korea Uber for Cup us. 2022. Uh, it's going to be fireworks. Absolutely, especially when you have headliners such as Akane Yamaguchi and An Su Young as the, we await them and their entrance in here. But what can we expect from a match like this? Well, do you know, I could talk about the stats. Uh, I could talk about hypothetically what should happen. But for a moment, I just want to take us back. 2018, mm. Uber Cup semi-finals here in the Impact Arena, the first time Thailand had hosted a major uh, badminton event for, since the 70s, I think. Thailand's first medal, China's first loss in something mm. like seven appearances.
career winning it. In fact, career halting, I think, a 10 times run for China. And we're back in the same arena yeah. with exactly the same lineup. Court one, China versus Thailand. Court two, Korea versus Japan. It's set up, isn't it? It is set up. <laughs> whether it's fate, whether Moses. that's got anything to do with what's going to happen here today. But, you know, uh, it's exciting. Should and this one, first. this one could be 5 nil to yeah. either team. That's what I'm excited about. Yeah, I mean, you and I have been kind of looking at it and, and kind of predicting. I mean, everyone, badminton fans will be doing that all over the world, won't they? Who's going to win this matchup and that matchup? By the way, the doubles as well. There's stories there because they split the doubles up and, and they've different partners and stuff, which we'll talk about later. But it is a really hard one to call. But we know it's not going to be straightforward. It really isn't. I mean, Akani Yamaguchi, like you, you mentioned a moment ago, world number one, world champion. You're going to talk about it, but she is leading the head-to-head -head with yeah. Anse Young and has dominated the last few performances. Let me ask you, how much does that play in a, in a, in a, in a player's mind when you when you go up against someone and you know that person's got the beating of you? Yeah, massively. I, I think Yamaguchi's more experienced, Anse Young's younger. Yeah. She's uh, won the last three. She's won number one, but she's she's leading it for Japan, and it's a big matchup to start the yeah. tie. There's a lot of pressure on that for both Yamaguchi, but also can Korea get through to a final if Anse M doesn't win that opening match as well? That's a clutch. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a good point. Yesterday, Denmark were playing Korea. Korea men in the Thomas Cup, and. A lot of it, you know, when Axelson was looking a little bit dodgy for a little bit, Anderson lost, we started looking at that. We'll, we'll come back to that discussion point because here is Akane Yamaguchi. As uh, Bobby mentioned there, world number one, the world champion, the reigning world champion. She's won the Uber Cup, as Bobby mentioned here, in 2018. Good omens for her in that sense. Two silvers in this competition in 2014 and 2020. A bronze in 2016. She's a reigning Asian Games champion, which of course means she'll be a little bit longer that champion because the games have just been postponed. Uh, and silver medalist in the most recent Asian Championships. Uh, a lot on her CV. And she's also won plenty of titles on the BWF World Tour. Nine to be exact, most recently and significantly the All England Open, which you are at, Bobby. Yes, I was. I was there uh, with Badminton England that day, but um, yeah, I mean, Yamaguchi, sh she's right up there. However, yeah. she lost to Prasista, which you'll talk about in a moment, from Indonesia earlier on this week. She's not looking her very best. No, she hasn't started well in any of these matches. And yeah, we will come back to that because it's a, it's a great point there. Anse Young, the real upstart of Badminton, she was already making her mark as a young teenager. We can't call her that anymore because she's turned 20 just a couple of months ago, but she has helped Korea really pump up things, hasn't she? Sudirman Cup a few months ago, got the bronze, and then Yuba Cup action, her experience of that. She was part of that 2018 team that uh, got the bronze, and in 2020, last year, in fact, she also got the bronze medal. And she's already won a whopping nine titles on the BWF World Tour. Most recently, and I was there at the Korean Open. What a player, though. She's, she's just so good to watch, isn't she? She's incredible. She's one of my favorite women singles players to watch um, lately. Um, she's been in good form this week. Um, I think this is her fourth matchup. She beat PB Sindhu in straight games earlier in the As she week. She always does, actually. <laughs> we have challenge, okay? You can challenge. You can challenge, okay? Now we have a toss from Japan. Just red or black? Red, yeah, the black one, okay. You win the toss. To serve. It's that, this or that side? This side. Okay. So, now, Bobby, now I want, I want to talk to you about the ends here because Yamaguchi is going to serve. An Young is picking the end near us. Now, talk about the ends and, and what's been going on here this week. Well, I mean, these big arenas, they're, there's so much space above your head for one thing. Yeah. It causes your timing to be a little bit altered and, and it takes a bit of getting used to. There's drift in these arenas. There always is. This is a huge arena, like you mentioned at the top of the show. The, the, uh, it's the second biggest in Asia, yeah. I think. We've seen quite a lot of drift from left to right as you look down at the court from our sort of main camera view. 
I'll just come back to that. We talk about the head-to-head -head here, and it is very much in favor of Akane Yamaguchi 7-4. They met most recently in the All England. That was in the final. And Yamaguchi has got the beating of her opponent, 7-4. Now, she's 24 years of age, 156 centimeters, a diminutive figure, but a giant in the world of badminton from Fukui in Japan. But the world number one at the moment, though, as Bobby and I have just mentioned earlier, which we'll, I'm sure, return to, she's not necessarily been at her best in this competition thus far. But, boy, what a time to turn it on here in the semi-finals. So she has won all the matches except one, which really does stand out against Bilkis Prasista. That's really the headline grabber here, losing to a number 333rd in the world, the Indonesian teenager. And uh, that really uh, was the big story this week. Now, Anso Young, 20 years of age, 170 centimeters tall. She's playing the, uh, at the best ranking she's had in her career. And she's from down south in Guangzhou, where we had the career masters recently. And uh, a, week after, a week before that, she won the career open. Uh, she has also won all the matches that she's been uh, played in. Uh, dropped a game against uh, Mia Blickfeld. Otherwise, it's been pretty straightforward. But sorry, Rob, Bobby, you were going on about the, uh, the drift and, and the conditions. Well, do you know what? I think that might have something to do with that result against uh, Persista yeah. earlier in the week. Roberto Tommy Oscariano is our umpire. And our service judge is Satyawan Mahadu from Mauritius. Yeah, just while we uh, wait for, uh, for this one to start. All that noise, by the way, that Japanese support, that's the team, that's not fans. Yeah, exactly. That's their teammates. I mean, it's what a great so team to be a part of. You know, I, I've loved how the teams have got so involved in, in all the countries. Yesterday, we had India who were outgunned by the, the Malaysian fans, but they really gave it all, didn't they? Yeah, what an atmosphere. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Japan, represented by Akane Yamaguchi. And on my left, Korea, represented by An Se Young. Japan to serve. Love all. Play. Yamaguchi to get us going here. Gets the first point on the board, Yamaguchi. One, go. What a shot from Asa Young, that forehand net, the skill involved in just holding your opponent. And we call it a double action, just sending her the wrong way at the last second. That's got to be the most frustrating thing for a player off the serve, isn't it? Well, if you notice, that was short, but it was also wide. And there is, I think, still that drift I was talking about, the conditions in here from left to right that affected him in the shuttle. But also, for me at least, Three, watching these matches this week, one. there's a slower and faster end. Now, most of the games have been won from the far side of the court when it's been taken to three. Victor Axis has done it a few times. Yamaguchi did it uh, in, um, in, set in the quarterfinals yesterday. Which is why they choose that in first. To be safe. Four. Well, actually, no, you'd, you'd prefer to end on the better end, that suits yep. game style, so that when it gets down to the clinching moments in potentially a third game decider, you can finish strong. And that, that seems to have been the tactic. I'm not sure who won the toss, actually, or who chose the end. Interesting. So, Five, one. so for her, she wants to get off to a good start. If, if Yamaguchi won the toss and chose that end, she wants that's, that's saying to me she wants a good start in this match. Which 
up till now, she hasn't really had. She's not started so matches well. But this is actually one of her better starts in the tournament. For me, Yamaguchi, the team need her, and they need her at her best. Yeah. They were all already through that group as group winners, and that loss to Prasista of Indonesia, for me, it didn't quite go her way early in the match. Seven she over. tried hard, but Six. lost the opening game. Yeah. Would she, would the team want her to give her all in that match, given that they were already through as group winners, to fight back hard, take it to a third game, use a lot of energy, knowing that she's really needed in the knockout stages? In the same way that Anne Se Young was rested in the group Seven stages over. against America, I think Three. it was. Yep. Um, Kai Su Ying's been rested. All the top players have tried to take a game off, and I think that might have perhaps happened with Yamaguchi in the week. Yeah, it's interesting. She's played a lot, hasn't she? More than the most. Over. And that match against Seven. Yvonne Lee, Three. she only took the lead at 17 16 in that first game. A long, long time to get going. Seems a bit more up for it here. There's not, you know, there's always that history between Japan and Korea. It's a big rivalry between these two. It is huge. I mean, Japan, Korea, and add China to that mix. Oh, yeah. They've got to be favourites for the win. Let alone to get to, I mean, it's tricky to ask who's going to win this one. Service um, over. But China will feel strong in the other semi-final and... Uh, yeah, that, uh, that final matchup tomorrow is going to be mouth-watering. Beautifully played by Yamaguchi. So deceptive overhead. And much like yesterday, we saw some incredible winning shots, particularly from that side of the court. It seems better to attack from. If it is the slower end, your sliced attack comes up shorter and therefore is more effective. And I think that's what uh, they're enjoying out there at the moment. This is an excellent start, isn't it, for Yamaguchi? Six-point lead already. Ten, four. Well, Anse Young played this net and was hunting the net mm. for the second shot, but the quality of Yamaguchi just denied her that opportunity. Out. It's not going on to Young's way at the moment. And a great, great beginning here from Angana Yamaguchi. Arguably her best so far in the tournament. She's 11 4 up at the interval in game one. Seconds, court two, twenty seconds. Thank you, Lenjo. Eleven four. Play. That's more like it from Ansia. Well, Service over. Beautiful Five. net shot again. That double Seven. action. Look how late Yamaguchi was, and Ansia Young had tons of space to aim for. Talk about shots there. What a winner that one is. Service over. Yamaguchi. 
to see as this match progresses and indeed all of them today when a player's missing on the back line there's so many more missed out the far side of the court top of the screen here yeah. compared to the near side and i think that's that element of drift, drift. okay service over six thirty. and so then you have to you have to take that into account as you're playing your shots don't you you do and if uh, thinking back to the opening rallies of this match and so young had hit a few shots quite short, almost as if you're scared of that drift ah, kicking in. Yeah. So you kind of take a bit off, you Seven, take too much off, it's, it's hard to do and hard to get right. Whereas Yamaguchi can feel like she can just give it everything, give it, give yeah. it a good whack, uh, and it's not going to go out the back. Seven. Seven. Over. A good start, it really is. Should be delighted Seven. with this Yamaguchi. Well, she was really enjoying that far side of the court. On this court yesterday in the quarterfinals, she looked a different player at the change of ends. And I suspect An Se Young is going to have a lot more success from that side of the court as well. There again, look, it was very almost 57 she didn't put a lot into that shot it was it was kind of just casual and yet just it sailed casual. out yeah. the back not this time for Yamaguchi service over it's that skill at the net again here from Anse Young you see how she lets the shuttle drop and then takes it later it just puts off the footwork timing of Yamaguchi and then makes her so late She gets it right over Yamaguchi onto Young. Nine, two, Yamaguchi here gives her loads of time. And then Anse Young shapes to play a push or a net shot and goes over the top at the last second. Again, very skillful in that forecourt area. So, the lead at seven. Just Seven five away one. from wrapping up this first game. 16, nine. In a good position here, Yamaguchi. I love that shot of the Japanese team. I know I mentioned it earlier, but how many teams do you see? They've all got instruments in their hands, yeah, you know. So I mean, that's fantastic. And banging away and clapping away, it's so Seven good. Over. Ten, 16. Anse started a career by beating Yamaguchi twice in 2019, which you really Started to make a name for herself. But it's interesting. There's a, there's a challenge Korea here. Challenges ball in. Well, the, line judge, was out. the line judge was pretty quick to react. And I think if the drift has come into play slightly, it's going to help Yamaguchi here. It looked to be on the line. And you are spot on there. Challenge and successful. One challenge remaining. It's great to have Hawkeye on the courts uh, again today. <laughs> Yesterday morning we, we all struggled slightly. Um, the courts were changed overnight Play. due yeah. to, I don't know if you noticed, but so many players were slipping out there in these humid conditions. They decided to relay all the mats. And of course, Hawkeye needs recalibrating. That takes some time, doesn't it? Absolutely. Well, important for her to just claw back Seven some points here on so young. Eleven. That's such a big deficit. Seven. I was just going to say the head-to-head. Uh, -head. It's the last three have been massive 
tournaments, all England, the World Championships and the BWF World Tour Finals, all gone Yamaguchi's way. Yeah, she's she's got that experience as well, and I think in a team event, and it's not just you're playing, you're not just playing for yourself, you yeah. know, you're playing for a team. It adds a, a huge amount of extra pressure that you're not used to, um, and that's a good sign for Yamaguchi. And they're shouldering it, aren't they? they? These are the headliners. They're shouldering that burden to put on a 20-year-old as well. Thanks for young. A very big hope for Korean badminton. And right now she's hanging in there. Seven just three. about in this first game. 12, 18. She's had a great start to the year. 18 wins out of 22 matches on So Young. She does look focused here, the Korean. I know she's 18, 12 down. But we've seen over the last few years, you know, she was teenager for so long that you kind of expect it that she did it in the world championships so i was watching the match um she lost 13, she lost in the quarter finals uh, in the world championships uh in huelva but the prior the previous matches she took them to three because she was acting like a teenager quite frankly um <laughs> if i can say that and just sort of petulance not bothered very casual and then suddenly sprung to life and came through she looks a lot more focused here today, a lot riding on this result. Oh, just jinxed her there, Bobby. <laughs> Seven over. Nine Two points Seven. away from wrapping up this first match. This first game, I should say. Gucci. Look at that skill, though, from Ansei Young. Again, when she's got time in front of her, the net, watch this, I mean, just sends her the wrong way. Whoop. Yeah, wonderful there, wrong footing. Yamaguchi, is there still some fight in this first game? Well, she has now got to face six game Seven points here, Anse Young. Give She saved one. Seven A lot of work to do here for the Korean. 15. We, we both peered over and that's a First point, game didn't we? I was just staring eagerly at the uh, line judge, yeah. to be honest. Like, it's hard to see, but yeah, it was in and a uh, great shot from uh, Japanese number one. Well, Kani Yamaguchi takes game one, 21-15 in pretty quick time against Ansu Young. Do you know, on, on replay, the, the cork of the shuttle there is the all-important factor. Yeah. The feather doesn't matter. The yeah. feathers can catch the line, but it has to be the cork that's in or out. That looked out to me, and no challenge. Interesting that she didn't even take a chance of that.
talked earlier about Anse Young doing uh, very well this year. She got to the semi-finals of the German Open, losing to Helping Tiao. We talked about the All England where she lost to Akane in Second the final. Game. She beat Pon Pawi in the Korean Open. Semis again against Helping Tiao in the Korean Masters, losing their semis, losing to the in the Asia Championship. So she's gone deep in tournaments. But she's up against someone who has come to the fore here. Akane Hamaguchi saving it when it matters most, Bobby. Yeah, she needs to control the attack on this faster end of the court, Yamaguchi, and that's exactly what she did there. Rather than all-out power, especially when you're looking for flat lifts and punch clears, she needs to control that. And in attack, she just needs to like make sure she's going for placement rather than power. These kind of shots from Anse Young, the last three there, were all flat and all into the rear corners, sort of very punchy. And that's what the difference is now in the change of ends. She can hit into the drift and just give it everything she's got. And it makes Yamaguchi have to play from the deep rear corners when the shuttle's behind her. Oh, a big slip. Well, Yamaguchi's recovered well after that slip. That's going wide. A little wry smile there from Yamaguchi as to what happened a little early in that rally. She did well to get that recovery, though, didn't she? I don't know how she played a shot from that position, quite frankly. Thank you. Thank you, Rangers. It's just stretching her cuff there. It might have uh, hurt a little. Two, off. Oh. Two in a row now on that side. Three. Different kind of shots. They both have gone. Not so Young's way. Yeah, again, uh, Yamaguchi is, is, is going for placement now, uh, which means she's got to hunt those lines a little bit more than she needed to in the uh, opening game. Oh. Excellent here from Yamaguchi, from uh, Not so Young. Four, two. This one is in, but she does Ball challenge Anse Young. Probably worth a shout. Yeah, like you shares, I think uh, that was a good challenge, but uh, it looked in from where, yeah. we, where we're sitting. And um, sometimes, it might be a bit early, but sometimes they use the challenge just to disrupt that run of momentum yeah. Yeah. Uh, that your opponent's on at the moment. Strategic challenge, but it is. Oh, it's tight. Oh, my word. How close is that? It is out. She knew the whole time, didn't she? What a challenge. <laughs> what a challenge. We were with Yamaguchi, I think, on that one. Yeah. My word. Well, there's no doubt in that one at all from Yamaguchi. Who didn't start the year particularly well, lost the round of 16 in the German Open, then won the All England. Then Badminton Asia Championships, lost in the final to one to you. Great dive from Anthony Young, what a pick up. really attacked that side, hasn't she, in this game, in this uh, game, Yamaguchi? Yeah, I think every um, every winner she's gone for yeah. has been down Anse Young's backhand defence. Anse Young on, on, on cruise control at the moment, um, somewhat. She's not in top gear, and I'm not sure why. I, I would have thought she'd be uh, trying to explode and get a lead in this second game, 
having Thank lost you. the first. And yet she's just kind of in third gear. I don't know. It will come. I'm sure it will come. Thank you. <laughs> she, had a, she had a bit of a think about that one. Five. Oh. Going back to that point, Bobby, as well, we saw her getting iced, and I've seen that a lot on her this week. Just wonder if she's carrying something at the moment. Yeah, it looked to me like it was kind of a physio control kind of thing. It looked like a unsurprising, we're going to try and keep that shoulder cool or, or whatever, mm. it, whatever it was. Trap muscle or something, what a shot. I think oh, that's at least four or five times. Six, every every almost five. every winner she's gone for is that that side, isn't it? To the left, backhand side. Nancy Young. Mind you, there's a lot of court to aim at there. Yeah, I mean the length of Nancy Young has was, wasn't actually that bad. That's a terrific shot from Yamaguchi. It's understated at the Six. moment, isn't it? I think you oh. mentioned that just now. With, um, Terrific shot making from Yamaguchi actually. It looks pretty orthodox, it looks kind of casual, but actually every one of those shots from her was technically brilliant and the length and the placement was, was perfect. It just causes problems. In. Beautifully done by Ann. And a very small fist Seven's pump over. after that shot Seven. landed in. Oh. Wonderful shot. Well, that's that's also in. Yep. Yep. There's that punch clear. That it was very flat, the clear. So it gives your opponent much less time to get there and get behind it. See how Yamaguchi, had she have taken that shot, would have been taking it well behind yeah. her head. Just edges in front here. That's a young. Very languid style, isn't it? At the moment, over. That's so young. Eight. Oh. It is, it is, but it's also Yamaguchi using the width of the court so well in that rally. Every shot was within inches of the sideline, and you can't afford to be languid. And so young, she needs to be fast to move, fast yeah. to pick no, up those shots. She's getting, she's getting moved and stretched a lot, isn't she? Very nicely done by Yamaguchi. Two-point lead. Remember, Eight. it was a great start from Anso Young. I fully expected her to take the lead in this second mm. game and pull away. Mm. She just seems to have slowed down. And I'm hoping it's not that icing injury or whatever it was we saw at the mid-game interval. Challenge here. This one was another. One. I'm not going to make a call on this one. <laughs> yes, we got the last one wrong. So yeah, we'll uh, let the experts do this one. The Hawkeye guys to show us what happened. Oh boy! 
Okay, they're close, but it's challenge out. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. 11-8 interval. It's the interval now. That just that ice bag is coming out again. It may not be anything, you know. Actually, well, that just looks like it's keeping her cool. Yeah. I think it's, exactly. um, you know, not sure, but they're moving it around. It looks like a generic across the shoulders type of problem, doesn't it? If it is a problem, it might just be to keep her cool. It's humid here. It is. It's really interesting enough. We've not seen it with anyone else with that sort of ice pack. Interesting, but it's a talking point anyway. Someone is keeping ice cool without the ice right now, so I kind of get a good chip. Yeah, absolutely. And she is on the tougher end of the court, we think. And yet she's she's in control of these rallies. You wouldn't have known, Bobby, that she's lost to the Bedford ranked player two days ago, Tani Yamaguchi. It's, it's, it's gone. Line, draw line under. She's moved on. She hasn't suffered for it. No, I think, uh, and again, I think she didn't want to put up as much of a fight to take it to a third game and then spend another half an hour of her energy, which the Japanese team, not her individually, but both, are going to need yeah. in these latter stages. And I think she just saved herself, if I'm honest. Well, she, uh, she did have a pretty emotional time afterwards and blamed herself in the press conference. She said, she has to just move on and recover, which she has at the moment. Four points here. As a player, as a team, you can't say, I didn't give my best effort. No. You can't say it. No. You know, because how, how would that sound to, uh, to, well, to the BWF, first of all, because that is in the rule book. Players must give their best efforts. It sounds like a strange rule to me, but uh, that's there. But also to the fans, you know, it doesn't sound good. But we've seen it over the years, famously, Anna Zantensen for Denmark has won the opening game, lost the second game to 21-2, 21-3, then just saved his energy for the final, yeah. you know, because on that trickier end, to bust a gut for 20 minutes. Knowing that it's in vain, probably. Yes. So... Uh, Tactical. It's a huge talking point, it's a big debate. What's not under debate right now, though, is how good Yamaguchi is doing at the, at the moment. She is six points clear of Ansa Young. big point for Anse Young. She's been controlling this rally from start to finish. Yamaguchi working so hard in defence. She has to win this rally to feel like she's got a, a belief in this, that she can do it. Well, she has at least done that. Over. Long rally, probably Nine, the longest one we've had so far in this game. Look how long it took Anse Young to win that rally. And it wasn't even a winning shot. No. Yamaguchi missed the court. But that's what Anse Young is going to have to do to beat this woman. Two and four stars from Yamaguchi in a row. Ten, fourteen. Three excellent points, Yamaguchi. Now, I wonder how she's Seven, feeling about this. So young, three behind now. Yeah, she was at full stretch, Yamaguchi. She tried to turn it across, just a little bit too much air time on the shuttle, and good to see Anse Young didn't waste that opportunity. She pounced. It's in, it's good. This is a very good run. Four points on a, in a row now. From Anse Young. She's right on the tail here of Yamaguchi. Oh, she 
Steve's annoying us off there. Service over 15-12. Just as she was about to catch up. Yamaguchi. An opponent produces something. Really annoyed the subs, she? Yeah, hugely frustrating after those points in a row. I think it was five points in a row she made. Trying to just Seven play orthodox over. singles, nobody give anything away, don't 15. take too many risks. And then it's long of the back line. We haven't seen Anse Young hit out of the back on this side of the court. Wayward. Yamaguchi just dropping oh, the shoulders for the first time we've seen. A little bit of negative energy there from her. It's just a point in it now. Yeah, we saw tons of that yesterday from Yanaguchi against Tai Su Ying. All the way from the start of the match, really, she looks like she was finding everything difficult, and somehow she dug deep and found a way through. With Anne Se Young on the charge here, she's going to need the same today. Well, this has been an absolutely brilliant run from Anne Se Young. Since the interval. Oh. Well, she's found a game style. How many winners has she hit in the last 10 points, Anse Young? Because I've barely not seen many, any. Not many. She's That's just all. forcing Yamaguchi to make an error somehow. Very mature performance. You're right, there's been very few winners from Yamaguchi. And earlier, in the first half of this game, she was getting quite a few of them, especially on that backhand side of... Yamaguchi. She knows how important it is for Korea to get off to the start with her getting the opening point. Not so young. And it is all square again. Oh. Oh, going wide. Wide. And now in the lead. 70, 60. Well, well. The six point lead that she had has been completely lost. Yamaguchi. What's impressed me in this second game is, is it's An Se Young's discipline that's got her into this position. Other than that uh, net kill when Yamaguchi gave it too much airtime, An Se Young hasn't really hit the floor since. No. It's Yamaguchi that's sort of being forced into hunting the back line, hunting the sidelines, and missing on those occasions. And An Se Young is just playing disciplined women singles. And it's patient, working, isn't it? Just really patient. I mean, look, Anse Young, she's not even hitting down that well. There's one. But lay it off, get a lift, and it's enough. Excellent. Well, well, the only attacking shot she played. Service over. She has somehow Eight, found seven, the key to unlock the secret to how to beat Yamaguchi in this second game. It's not going to work at the beginning of the third no. because of the ends, the conditions. But she's making use of the conditions right now. And Anse Young is going to, if we can get to a third game, she's going to finish the match on the side of the court, yeah. potentially. Service over. 
Oh. He has to get there first though, Shez. 18 all. Yeah, about time, I think, as far as Yamaguchi is concerned, that she gets a winner like that. What oh, a shot! Brilliant. Absolutely so brilliant from Anse Young. For well, the left leg jump out here. And reverse slice cross. Yamaguchi desperately trying to fight to get back in court, and her, her leg just slips out. She had no chance. What's more, she hasn't hit a shot like that for 20 minutes. And that's what caught Yamaguchi by surprise. She just wasn't expecting that. Slight advantage here now to so young. Exquisite. Well, so young. I, I have been so impressed with at least from about whatever it was, five all through to now for Manso Young. It's probably the best I've seen her play because it's a mental battle. It's a game of chess sometimes, and she's played it so well. Two game points here for Manso Young. Got off. She converts. Brilliant. One all. Second win won by Korea, 21-18. We have a real match on our hands now, don't we? We really do. And for a moment, after Amsterdam started the second reasonably well, and suddenly Yamaguchi hit all those winners, I thought, this is gone. Yeah. And she was down. Anse Young was down in the second. What was the score? There was a six point, there was a six point gap between them Avengers. earlier on. 14-8, something like yeah, that. that's right. And then suddenly... Turned it. A switch just got turned in her head. It was a mental switch. She stopped trying to hit winners. She stopped allowing Yamaguchi to hit any winners and just worked hard. Wonderful from Ansa Young. Two, 20 seconds, or two, 20 seconds. Now, Bobby, let's talk ends, shall we? Because Kani Yamaguchi now at the other end again. She needs a healthy lead, basically, at the mid-game interval, the change of ends. She needs to be up by at least three, more like four or five points, really, to hold off the no doubt what's going to happen is Anse Young is going to come back stronger at the latter stages on the better end. Anse Young needs to be within three. If she can get a lead, I mean, that would be incredible. you play on that better end it's slower there's a breeze coming into you so you can just fire the shuttle into the rear corners just like Yamaguchi did there with less danger of the shuttle going out and you're on the back foot I'm saying I'm on the back foot and from there 
I mean, she couldn't even play a shot. Yeah, we saw Anse Young do that. Yeah, we'll a few times in the previous game. Opening rallies in game three. Service over. Yeah, over two, two, one. A little bit quieted. The Japanese can now trying to raise themselves. So much depends on this opening match. Good attack from Yamaguchi. That's that straight smash down to Anse Young's backhand side again. left a racket that was going in but it just moves what four, two three four two. inches it's curved away didn't it now that lead is three for Yamaguchi Five, how much is that the, the, the ends situation also playing in your mind knowing that you're at, the, at a particular end and knowing that it has an effect? Well, it's hard because you kind of feel like it's okay when we change ends, I'll do much better. <laughs> but if you're 11-4 down, then you've got a real challenge on your hands. So she has to try and stay positive here, yeah. try and get on the scoreboard, try and stay close to the energy. Six, two. And that's the challenge. How, how do you do that? Lead is ever increasing. What a shot from Yamaguchi. You knew that was going to happen, didn't you? And that's left. It's so young on the floor. Well, the cross lift was almost like a drive. It was so flat, so much pressure here. Look where Anse Young's trying to take the shot off from, and Yamaguchi can just hold her base at the front of the court and look for a kill. Thank you, Rangers. Thank you. <laughs> Flat on her back. Seven, two. Kept that in and it was flat yes. as well, so what a shot. Brave from Anse Young. Service over. Three, seven. Line shot there from Ryan. Four, seven. Well, both of these players good from that round the head position instead of taking it backhand, but there's skill involved in turning that shuttle cross. Tons of slice. Talking of slice. Well out though for Yamaguchi, and the lead seven. has been cut to two.
That's going wide. Oh, that's well, it made it in. It looks oh, it to have been going wide, and suddenly it straightens up. Eight, that's why she was leaving it, wasn't she? It, it, it appeared so, didn't it? <laughs> worked so hard to get back to within two points and so young and then two fairly easy mistakes oh good shot yeah Korea that's actually not a bad shot from so young i thought it was out initially as well but she's challenged well today Anse yeah young, he so. has Very hard to call. <laughs> I'm going to go without. No. Oh, 50-50 oh. oh. points on. Successful. <laughs> One challenge remaining. Ten, five. Well, we were talking about the leads coming right. into the interval, weren't we? And right now, we've got you in a good position here. Great smash. Using the same tactics Yamaguchi did Seven in the over. change of ends before. Six, Straight ten. down that line. And into the break we go with Yamaguchi Seven, six, leading by four, five. 11 6 in game three. On court one. Well, a five point final. margin. That's double. tough to call. Anselia so would prefer five. it. Three Don't points, four yeah. maybe is middle ground. You probably give the advantage to Yamaguchi at this stage. But it's still all to play for. And so Young so much better on that side of the court. Adjusting the tape, actually. Yeah, just removing it. Yamaguchi. In. That is in the corner and a pumped fist from Yamaguchi Eight. from uh, An. Yeah, left by Yamaguchi, thinking again that would go out. Wrong footed again. That's three in a row since the interval. What a punch, Clear. Just sent her the wrong way, didn't she? Nine, 11.
Well, Ann Se Young's back to her old tricks. That game two, where she just worked hard, stayed disciplined, didn't attack outright, and worked Yamaguchi to the point of success. And it's the same here. And there you go. She's worked her opponent so well. We talked about the five-point deficit in the interval. That's almost gone, Bobby. Incredible. Well, there was a few terrific shots in a couple of rallies after the interval that you wouldn't expect necessarily to have been winners, but they were. And yet, rallies like that where she's just disciplined and playing at a good level, right. working hard, and, uh, you know, getting success against the world number one. Well, one deficit, one lead. It's all gone. Seven. Oh. Five points on the trot since the break. Well, the momentum now firmly with Anse Young. And it raises the question, because I couldn't quite work out what the strategy was at the toss of the coin, because it's obviously Andy in here. I've seen it all week. Yeah. We've seen so many top-level well, singles exactly. matches going the same way. And I thought Yamaguchi won the toss, and yet she didn't choose that end of the court. I don't understand. To finish on that side, yep. The Japanese squad doing all they can. Thank you. Thank you. Shake of the finger there. Six in a row from Ansu Young. What a lead. With a, it feels like the confidence has been sucked out of Yamaguchi. Yeah, and Anse Young just bossing this yeah. match now. Well, she desperately needed to break seven that run of points. Yamaguchi, well, seven in a row from An. Well, that's probably the most wayward shot we've seen today from An. 30, oh. Frustration now 40, creeping into 30. Yamaguchi. Well, she's squeezing too tight on this side of the court. Controlled attack means you really need to be accurate, and if you have to be accurate, it makes it harder to be accurate, you know? <laughs> Game three. Almost at the hour mark. Service over. 15, 40. Terrific net shot again. Just so much quality from Anse Young when she goes for net shots. Is there still more to this game? Matching each other at the moment. An apology from Yamaguchi as that tumbles over. 16, 
Attack, but a better defense. Well, this is a terrific rally at this stage of the game, it's exactly what we expect, but the lift long. The lead is two now for Yamaguchi. 17-15. Shia Will is going to win this one. And those are important points here for Yamaguchi. 18-15. And she's started to veer away from her opponent. Has to be now for yeah. Ansa Young. <laughs> oh, she made it! Lovely on the backhand. Again, brave shot from Ansa Young. That so net shot, double action. 16, and so tight that it caught 18. the net at this stage on semi-finals day. So brave. Wow. Oh, brilliant, isn't it? It was half-court, big smash winner and and Se Young just soaks up the attack. Oh, she's missed the chance! Right there in front of her, Yamaguchi. Well, one time to make that one, Robbie, Bobby. Two lifts in that rally that were short. The first one came back, and it just adds pressure to the second one. It has to be even better. Mm. And that's where Yamaguchi just tight, tightened up and made the error. Shots from Anse Young and Yamaguchi just soaks up in defense. Well, they've saved the best till last, Jess. I mean, these what rallies rally. now yeah, absolutely. mean so much as well. Again, she's got it through. Oh! Well, well, look how hard she's breathing. Oh. What quality we just had. What an effort from Anse Young. And she just collapsed to the floor. Didn't have the leg strength to hold herself up after that huge rally. Oh my, it is top, top quality stuff here between these two. 44 shots at Rally. A little wince there from uh, Nancy Young. Uh, where is this going to go, Bobby? Oh. Uh, the umpire might as well come back out with that coin and just give them a chance. <laughs> Heads or tails for the match. now with Anse Young. Yeah. The change of ends hugely helped her. She was 11-5 down, Chairs, is that right? Absolutely, she said six-point lead. Uh, no, Yamaguchi did, yeah. She, she won the second comfortably in the end, Anse Young, after coming back strong. And now, after those two points, she'll be full of confidence. And match points. 
two of them in hand for Ant. What a turnaround this has been. Well, those two long rallies really did, did all the damage. Now it's just a case of nerves and shot making. And Sir Young has given Korea the all-important lead. <laughs> and this is why people love her. She lets it all out at the end. And it's a terrific start for her and Korea. And the emotions coming through. That's what Uber Cup finals do. Well, three losses in a row to Yamaguchi, yes, including the All England, including the World Championships. And semi-final day at the Uber Cup brings out the best in Anse Young. Look at that emotion on her face. What a performance. This has been classic badminton, classic Uber Cup finals action. It has been so good to watch. And a masterclass from Anse Young, who's just beaten the world number one, and now has beaten her five times out of their 12 meetings. So much more to come from this young woman as well. Scary, isn't it? Well, I, I mean, I want to say good luck tomorrow, but of course we can't yet. It's a, it's a Uber Cup time, it's a team match. We don't know how the rest are going to go. We do know that China have got the lead in the other semi-finals, so Chen Yufei is looking good. But today, well, Chez. It all belongs to Aung San Young. She has defeated the world number one, Akane Yamaguchi, 15-21, 21-18. 21-18 in just over an hour. And coming up now, it comes thick and fast, it's women's doubles next. So, a tremendous start here to the Yuba Cup semi-finals between Japan and Korea. An Se Young has served up a masterclass in beating Akane Yamaguchi. She's given Korea the all-important lead, and we're now moving into doubles action here. In uh, court two, it's Nami Matsuyama and Chiharu Shida playing Lee So-hee and Shin Jung chan Uba Cup semi-final, the first single. As you can see from uh, the scoreboard as well, represented Thailand stunningly by in front. Nami Masuyama and Shiharu Shida. Right next to us against China. So first up, the Japanese pair of 
Nami Matsuyama and Chiharu Shida, who have got that silver medal for Japan in 2020 in Aarhus. They also contributed towards the Sudirman Cup last year in Vanta, Finland. Gold medalists at the Asia Team Championships as well in 2020. And uh, plenty of titles as well in the UWF World Tour. Most recently, All England Open. Versus Just a short while Korea. ago, runners up in the World Tour Finals. Lee and the and Indonesia Shinsu Open Shah. Super 1000 last year, as well as Indonesia Masters. Had a good time in Bali, didn't they? Now, their opponents, a formidable pair indeed, Lee Sohee and Shin Seung Chan, who were silver medalists at the World Championships recently in Spain. Got a bronze there as well in 2014 in Copenhagen. Gold medal in the Sudirman Cup in 2017. And talking about their Uber Cup experience oh, last year, finishing Indonesia. third. They were runners-up in 2016. Another very accomplished pair. And on the World Tour, they have four titles. The French Open is their most recent one last year. It's just thick and fast, these, these wonderful matches coming up, Bobby. Yeah, I think it's amazing. Uh, you know, these two Koreans, they, they know each other so well. I mean, they've been playing together since they were 14, 15 years yeah. old. They were, they were twice World Junior Champions this pair back in 2011 or something um, you know so players welcome Japan black or red red you will be black you've won the toss be on my right serving and who serves be serving receiving well very definite from that uh, toss of the coin the Japanese won the toss and very quick to elect that side of the court so at least somebody out there sees it how I see it. It's so important, that choice of ends. Now, we'll get a little bit more information for you on these sets of players. Now, the head-to-head -head is one or almost recently the Malaysia Masters, one in three by Matsuyama and Shida. And I can tell you the only other time that they played was at the Korea Open where Lee and Shin won in three as well. Now, Nami Matsuyama, 23 years of age, 166 centimetres tall, from the south of Japan in Fukuoka, and playing at her highest ranking of seven. Chiharu Shida, from the other end of Japan, 25 years of age, 162 centimetres tall, and uh, they have been long-term partners as well. So they played two matches thus far. They did drop a game against uh, Mamahit and Nadia of Indonesia, but beat Jaeger and Mikalski fairly easily and rested against Chinese Taipei and France as a pair. They have mixed round the pairs as well in Japan and actually so of Korea. I'm talking of which, here is Lee Sohee, 27 years of age, 171 centimeters tall from Ulsan. And her highest ranking is actually number two in the world with Chung Yi Na. Chung Chung Chan, 27, 172 centimetres tall. And they're both actually the current world number two pairs. Incredible to be world number two with two different players as well, isn't it? For someone like Lee So Hee. Uh, they played three out of the four matches so far. They've won all of them. They did drop a game against Kregard and Toysen. Ready to that play. one took 83 minutes. Didn't play as a pair against Canada. In charge of this one is the American umpire, Philip Aoyong Chi. And the service judge is Shaila Skrikani from India. So what do we think about this one then, Bobby? Well, if I can be brutal, I think Japan are scared of playing this <laughs> Korean pair. Uh, none of them like playing against uh, Lee and Shinsen Chan. They're so, I mean, they're powerful, they're athletic, they're good in defence, they keep the running going, they're boring 
if that's if that's not a uh, an insult you don't mean to anybody. That in the yeah. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it's perfect for the way they need to just keep the rally going, keep the shuttle yeah. in court. I mean, Shin Seung Chan wants to get at the back and hit down. Lee So he's much better around the net. Um, it's going to be tough. Patience would be key here, wouldn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, am I right? Japan, represented by Taharu Shida and Nami Akiyama. And on my left, Korea, represented by Shin Seung Chan and Lee So Hee. Korea to serve Lee So Hee to Taharu Shida. Love all. Play. I feel like I ought to uh, just explain a bit more just so people listening at home didn't think I was insulting anyone then. But I love watching Shin and Lee play and when I say that it's, it's, it's a perfect style for the level of competition they play at. But I'm a double player, level double player. I'm guilty of trying to be too flashy, trying to take on too much, trying to use too much skill and making mistakes, making errors. You don't see that much from, from uh, Shin Seung Chan and Lee So Hee. You see the orthodox shots, you see the right shots, you see them do it very well, and they outwork and just keep it going. And that's exactly what they need to do. So it's a compliment to them in that they play in that style. Trying to make up for things, eh? Well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> A nice winner that from Shin. An attacking shot. I think the choice of opponents today is a big thing for Japan. Mm. Their top pair, Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota. At times yesterday, Fukushima in particular wasn't looking at her sort of controlled best. Um, quite a few errors. Um, but she's playing later if we get that far. But. but Changing partners with an, with, with uh, the very tall and powerful Mayu Matsumoto. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, and then, I thought maybe the second pair for Japan would get the call up, Matsumoto, but with Wakanda Nagahara. Nagahara, yeah. I mean, they're so experienced. They've got so much kind of what twice world champions, uh, and yet again, they've not been picked either. And I, and that's purely because the opponents are Shin Seung Chan and, and Lee So Hee, who who cause Japan problems. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so interesting to see the, these variations on the doubles, but it's such talking points, isn't it? Three all at the moment. And the same can be said later for Korea. If, Kim and Kong. Again, if we get that yeah. far. Well, it's Kim Hyung Jong. Yeah, not, not Kim So Young. Not Kim So Young, yes, but I think, I suspect that might be some injury because yeah. she's not been playing she's much. She's not played much, yeah, no. absolutely right. Four, three. Just in front here, the Koreans at the moment. It's the start here for them. 5 3 up. 5 3. There's a lot going on next door. Lots of noise in here from the Thai crowd. Well, at least so he wanted the shuttle, didn't she? And it just caused a bit of confusion for the Korean pair. Yeah, big atmosphere. Thailand, have they just come through, I think? Yep. That opening First game. game. Yep. And then these doubles against Chen Ching Chen and Jia Yi Fan, I'm assuming that is.
first over. So far, I'm going to be six, pretty four. happy with the start, Shin and Lee. Notice it's slightly different for doubles compared to singles, that, those drifty, endy conditions. If the Koreans are playing on the faster side, so with the drift, yep. of course they've got more power in attack. And of course there's two of you, so your partner can pick up the shot that might come back. But you can still rain down those smashes and drives. On the slower end, obviously you're hitting into the drift and it just slows the shuttle a bit and makes defending a bit easier. So service over, five, six. annoyed about that. Service over, seven, five. Shin Shin Chan, full of life. Celebrating every point they win at the moment. media and press down there today shows that it's hard to actually make out where the I line judges are exactly because they're wearing black as well it's dark defense oh, they've drawn level japan seven four shin and Lee, back to the round of 16 in the German Open this year. Quarterfinals of the All England. Round of 16 in the Korea Masters. Quarterfinals of the Bampton Asia Championships. It's been particularly successful 2022 for them so far. And their luck change here in the Uber Cup. Service over. win so far this year yeah they did well I think it was the uh, it was the world champs wasn't it in Huelva they uh, they had a great week getting to uh, get into the final, final. yep Very rare to see Shin Seung Chan hunting the net just like that for a partner. Good combo there from the Koreans. She's normally looking to cover the mid-court drive so that if the rally continues, she can get to the back of the court where she prefers hitting down from. So yeah, a real change up for the Koreans. In contrast, Matsuyama and Shida have had a pretty decent. 2022, eight wins out of ten. They only Aaron, managed Aaron. round of 16 in the German Open, but then got to the final of the All England. And then the quarter final of the Bampton Asia Championships. Nine, Certainly better than their opponents at the moment. They lost to Tung Shu Xian and Tung Yu in the women's doubles. Well, yeah, the net cord coming in to help. That's good. Nine all. Service over, 
frustration. Ten, Can nine. you just hate that when that happens, Bobby? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so one time you're completely in control of the shuttle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't go right. No, and um, they're not hunting the attack off return of serve. Yeah. Well, they are, but it's not as much pressure as you see some pairs doing. So really at this level, change serving in the net. Oh. Shihari Shida gets a ta uh, chance this time. Right between the two from Lee. Brilliant from Lee So He. And at the interval, Korea lead by one in game one. And great court coverage from the Korean Shin Sing Chan with a straight smash. Lee So He had just switched her feet out to look for that forehand drive. And tough going for the Japanese. in front, Lee and Shin. Great defense from Shen Chung Chan for a moment, but control from Shida. And just physically used her body quickly to get out to then take the pace off the shuttle. Talking about that, wasn't it? Should have hand movement. 12, 11. I should be moving in. Signal, wasn't it? Service over. Go on, Shin. Let's, let's yeah, it coach. was. I mean, it was. Do not talk during the rally. <laughs> <laughs> Who, me? We saw that yesterday, actually, in it the did. quarterfinals. Japanese coach was getting told off. have a lot invested in this one and rightly so I mean they're a, they're a match down yeah there is frustration replaying that shot in your mind a bit of wincing frowning going on the pressure is on because of Yamaguchi's loss Defense. That was all Lee Sohi and her defending that. 15, Brilliant. I was begging for one of the Japanese to put in a drop shot, yeah. take the pace off, do something different. The moment they do that, they make an error. That's twice in two rallies. So frustrating, you can see on the face there. Wait. A lead of three now for Lee and Shin. Ah! 
and there's a drop shot you were asking about. Yeah, that's good. The change-up was going cross over to Shin Seung Chan, who, who straight push didn't have enough to get past the net player. Done there by Lee. Straight to the body of your opponent. Always difficult to play. Teammates enjoying that one as well. Jim Chan hunting that net again. That's an area of her game where I think she's really improved in the last year or so. Well, the Korean team taking on the Japanese team, but from yeah. the bleachers <laughs> as well as on the court. It's a good contest there as well. Japan have got instruments. I mean, they're, they're a true. level up. That's true. Well, they needed to get that, didn't they, Japan? The lead is three. Japan. So he in defense again, she's defended so well, but this cross block past the net player this time. And they're back on the attack. Just soaking up the Japan attack. Snatched it. Is that a bit of frustration for you? Massively, yes. Yeah. Squeezing too tight, just too tense. Yeah. Feeling like there's got to be so much on this one shot, it has to matter, and then just making the mistake. It's just added pressure that you don't need. It's playing into the plan, isn't it? Lee and Shin, they're here. We talked about that. Frustrating your opponent, playing the long game. It's been anything but boring. Just defending so well, aren't they? Yes, it has. <laughs> I was slow to pick that one up then, Jess. <laughs> like the Japanese at times. Anything but boring. Anything but boring, there you go. Four points in it. Happy about that. 16, Great angle from Matsuyama initially. And Shin Tsun Chan had to take that one almost off the floor. Thrown in there, Shin. Game point, 16. Four game points. She's had some mid to net court area training, Shin Sun Chan, because she never used to play like this. At least a few years back when I was touring around Asia at these tournaments. But she's so much better looking for net now. Match, uh, game point rather, for the Koreans. And they have taken it. Game okay. one. Game one by won it relatively comfortably, I think we'd, we'd say, Rob, Bob, Bobby. I think so, and, and very polite applause from her teammates there in the crowd. I didn't want to see that. I wanted to see them off their feet, yeah. you know, screaming and shouting, but 
That's a polite clap of the hands. Well done. Well done. Well, they know if they win this, yeah, two up, 21-16, Lee and Shin against Matsuyama and Shida. goes without saying the pressure really on Nami Matsuyama and Shahara Shida here Japan might have played a very strategic game here with their format today essentially their third pick doubles pair playing top with a mix up of other players from one and two to make up make up the second pairing Nozomi Okuhara of course coming up in singles whatever happens after this one former world champion and a very strong Sayaka Takahashi who might get used at fifth for the third singles but it's a dangerous game for Japan if that's the plan if they lose these two opening rubbers so much pressure then on Okuhara at singles Attack from Japan using every inch of the court. Over. One, Good start here for the Koreans again. Talk about momentum, Bobby, coming in from Three a game you've just one. won and won well. And sometimes you've seen that the interval actually, or the break between games, it it does hurt that, doesn't it? But you're feeling good about yourself. You just want to get on with it. You don't want that break, do you? Yeah, you see some some players, uh, especially the younger players, rushing back onto the court. They, they want to get back on, don't they? Yeah, so they want to waste no time, just carry that forward. You know, you see a lot of players extending breaks, asking mm. to towel down, asking for the court to not slow it down. To try and slow it down for whatever reason. That might call for it at the time, or it might help them. You never did that, right? <laughs> Gamesmanship? Come on. Of course not. <laughs> no, I think it's uh, I think it's in everybody. Yeah. You need it. Uh, you know, it's there to be, to be exploited. Like, Can yeah, we not use that word? Used, I don't know. Capitalized on? You've got to try. Everyone pushes the boundaries for certain things, especially in sports. I think uh, I think the the priority here, however, the change of ends is that it's there are different conditions. At the different sides of the court, and I think that's the overriding factor at these change events is the discussion of how we're going to deal with that, what are we going to do tactically, strategically to use that to our advantage to not get caught when it hurts, uh, and that will be the discussion rather than you know trying to maintain that momentum at the moment. Interesting, while we were having that discussion, the uh, umpire was again having a little go at the Japanese coach. 
So another fine point for the Koreans. They lead by four here. Yeah, when they get in that attack formation, they've been mm. phenomenal today so far. Bordering on interesting. It's a good. <laughs> Japanese doing everything they can at the moment. Try and nullify what the Koreans are doing. Characteristic the error from Lee So He. Wait. Well, that was good from Shin Kim Chan. She's buoyed with confidence. Defended the first one off the hip and then rushed forwards as if to say, come on then, hit at me. And Japanese just went at her body so much, they hit the shuttle out the, out the back. That's, that's just mind games. Yeah. You know, that's, that's confidence from Shin. Yeah, they're, like you said, they're willing to attack us. Attack us, we'll repel everything throw at us. Once in a while, it'll work out for the Japanese. No, it's just a good shot. Hardest place to defend is anything down that right side of your body. If the shot's aimed at your hip, your shoulder, mm. you know, you've got your right. It's hard to know and react quick enough to take it on the backhand. Do I move my feet and take it forehand? It's you don't have that that luxury of time. Service over. Eight, five. Still lead by three. Again, excellent work from Shin, and that defending, brilliant. Superb, superb. The Japanese are channeling more of their attack on Shin Seung Chan in this game. Lee So He was defending so well in that opener, and I think that's probably their discussion was, we need to attack Shin. <laughs> However, when she can play shots like that, amazing. And you were saying earlier, Bobby, that you'd want maybe a bit of variation. After you're playing three or four of those attacking shots, try and drop or something like that. Yeah, Shin Seung Chan over the years has been guilty of not being the best at picking up the stop drop or the slower drop. You get into that very formatted kind of hit with power, hit clear, hit smash, block and move. Deceptive stop drop, yeah. and you think the smash is coming, you've got a rush forward to pick it off the floor. She used to get caught there quite a lot, and that was how you beat, in particular, Shin Seung Chan out of this pair. And yet we're not seeing that variation come from the Japanese yet. No. Well, they are on a roll. 11-5 up. Lee and Shin. However, remember, we saw something similar in the last game. In the last match, I should say. And it all turned around. So they're not going to get too excited just yet. Let's see how the Japanese react now. It's crunch time almost, isn't it? 
Yeah, well, half a game for them to recover is not a lot. It just adds even more pressure, if anything. But you've got to hand it to Lee So Hee and Shin Xiong Chan. They've played phenomenally since the start. Take it anyway, it comes at the moment. Well. Tumbles over for Japanese. Well, there's a great shot from Lee. Is now seven. Oh. It was there to be put away, wasn't it? Over, she wasn't going to spend the opportunity. Matsuyama. Not enough on that shot. Wonderful defense again. First Lee So He, they went at Shin and she did the same thing straight down the line. How is it, Bobby? When you talk about Korean badminton, the thing that people know about it is just the defending from the Koreas generally across the board. It's just excellent. Yeah, even in uh, even in singles over the years, for many, many years, I've got some favorite players of mine, uh, a Korean, and because it's like it's like they've digested the how to play badminton textbook when you're five years old and, and they just make it look so easy and say young for example footwork timing for it you know she didn't get caught once she wasn't deceived ever in that open and she's no. playing as the best player in the world you know so and just, they're just gritty solid work hard defend everything never give up and I mean, you can't really ask for better characteristics of a Babin. Japan player. challenges called out. challenge here from Japan. Let's see, they need this quite badly, don't they, to go their way. Had many challenges in this particular match so far. And Matsuyama has barely taken her eyes off that screen. This point is crucial. It's in. Oh, oh no, it's, it's out! out. <laughs> oh, this goes to show how things can look deceptive. One challenge remaining. Well, well, well. Service over. Seven points 15. now in the gap. Play. Well, since the interval. It's 5-3 and scoring. Going with the Koreans. A bit of variation on serve from Shin, but too easy into the body. Service over 9-16. A bit short, that clear from Lee So Hee. A brick wall in defence, Shin Seung Chan. Can they finish this? Oh, it's 
it's come off the frame, but it's yeah. continues. Somehow, it was an excellent point there. Shin with the defending, Lee with the attacking. What a combination for Korea. Shin Sien Chan at the start of that was just under so much pressure and how she just backed herself and kept it going. And that's the reason why they're number two in the world. That's the reason why it appears Japanese Play. team are just scared of playing them. Carol, get ready. Well, there's a, there's a discussion here. Quite a, a long one. What to do here? It wouldn't surprise me as a sort of last chance saloon type of thing if they almost play this mixed. They've got a net man, they stay on the attack. And at any opportunity, or something as drastic as that, something as momentum changing as that. Oh. Hey. Wrong choice from Shin, I think yeah. she knows it. Yeah. Filled with confidence though, I mean that's the shot of somebody who thinks, yeah I'll take this on, I can make that shot. I'm a game and seven points up at the moment. Usually, you'd see the big swipe back yeah. down, down the line. Play. Brilliant from Matsuyama. She read that for Shin so well and had interests only in covering that net reply. These are much needed points for the Japanese. They need a lot more than that right now. Lovely drop there from Shin. It's taken me a few rallies, but I think I've worked out that whole conversation that ah. the, the Japanese have had. Korea, they're not going over the top at all, especially late on in this second game, where they normally lift out long into the corners, they clear a lot. Instead, they're playing everything in the midcourt to the net soft to not give the attack away. Japan are now saying, right, we need to be looking for that shot, looking for that net and getting on it quickly and taking the attack back off them straight away. So they want to try and rest the initiative back. Yeah, it's that change of ends, that change of conditions. It's hard to defend from that far side of the court, which is why, instead of lifting, stay on the attack, you don't need to defend. Mm. And I think that's what the Koreans are trying to do. There, two shots from Korea, both at the net. They had to lift that one, then back to the net. Well, they haven't got much choice in these shots, they have to get deep. And again, another. and again from Shin. Well, that's classy, that really is top level doubles. She just came in and looked to hit hard and then turned it out wide soft. It was beautiful. We've been served up Korean masterclasses, haven't we, in both these matches, singles and doubles now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a joy to watch, hasn't it, so far? It's been brilliant to watch. The most impressive thing is the mental game yeah. of both Ahn Se Young in the singles, but also here in the doubles. They've just they've gone out there without fear, with huge amounts of confidence, and they've really taken it on. 19 and 12. Desperately needed point there. Over. 
Yeah. 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 You know, you were talking about the, perhaps the fear factor a little bit for the Japanese. You also look at it from a team point of view. They've met 10 times in the Uber Cup. Korea have won eight out of the 10 times. The last two, by the way, have gone to Japan when they've gone to become a stronger unit. But Korea have a very, very good head-to-head -head against Japan in this competition. Yeah, great attack. Channeling the body. 14, 19. And no breathing space for Lee So Hee. And going with that head-to-head, -head, by the way, from 1986 to 2016, it was all Korea, and barely a, even one match scored for Japan. It has tended to be five zeros all the way. Now they're pulling some points back here. They're still four away. Yeah, I was almost scared to say it, but earlier in the week, there was, uh, I think it was a men's singles, 2013 he was up match point mm. and lost the match on my court, which was uh, incredible how he saved seven match points. Saw that as well with uh, Singapore and Thailand in the deciding fifth game, fifth match rather. Teenager doing the business there, there's Joel Coe. Great counter. Oh, oh, they got in each other's way. It looked to me the initiative had gone back to the Koreans. It was all Shinsun Chan's, really. Lisa He just kind of interrupted her rhythm. Lisa He wanted to go around the back, hoping Shinsun Chan would really commit to that net, but she didn't. She stood her ground, and really, Shinsun Chan should just have the confidence there just to. Keep working. It's cut to three points now. Left. Pressure. Shin. Could Come just here. start to Come be telling. Yes. Yes. See where that serve landed. It was about a metre past service line. That's better. And they're back on attack. What a rally this is. And it doesn't need us to explain what it means. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The careers have kept it alive. Unbelievable. Four 20, match points. Point it's up to just device belief the way they. they Somehow stay in it. Well, it was a must win, wasn't it, for the Japanese surviving four match points. The way this match has been going is surely too much to ask. But how did Korea survive that? Yeah. I tell myself that they Thank have you. these machines Thank that you. just. Ready to play shoot out shuttles at them from great heights and they're just spending all day. Well, that's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. But why doesn't anyone else do it then? <laughs> Match point. So no one defends like a Korean. It's incredible. Three match points. No margin for error here for the Japanese. <laughs> Korea have gone two up here in the semi-finals against Japan. It has been absolutely superb from Lee So-hee and Shin Shu-chan. Incredible today, that pair. They had everything. Shin Seung Chan dominant at the net. I mean, that's the first time I've ever said that. Defense was incredible. Lee So He was so solid. And 21, 16, 
21-17. For me, there was only really one pair in that match. They were amazing today. They have uh, really entertained, haven't they? And they've shown a bit of everything, defence and attack. And they have given Korea such an important lead here. Look at that emotion from Shin, Shin Seung Chan. And Korea now must be thinking they are in the driver's seat after Lee So Hee and Sin, Shin Seung Chan have beaten Nami Matsuyama and Shihara Shida 21 16, 21 17 in 44 minutes. That means we are now going to go into the third match. Nozomi Okuhara plays Kim Gutton next. Order of play here in this Uber uh, Cup match between Japan and Korea. Korea are two up. And that means if they win this next match, it's all over. They are into the semi finals at the expense of Japan. Who would have said that before this tie? So it's all up to Japan's Nozomi Okuhara. She has to win here against On Kim Ga Eun. Uber of Cup Korea. Semi final. The second single. Japan, represented by Nozomi All to play for. It has been superb entertainment so far. The Koreans have been absolutely outstanding. As we now see Nozomi Okuhara make her way towards the court. She has won the Yuba Cup before, right here in Bangkok with Japan in 2018. Finished third in 2016 in Kunshan, Versus. China. Korea, She's, of course, an Olympic bronze medalist in 2016 and a former world champion as well in 2017. Finished second in 2019, has helped Korea to the Sudirman Cup silver twice, 2015 and 2019, and they got a bronze in Umpire, 2017 as well. She's the reigning Asian Games Service champion, judge. and that will last Sydney a little bit longer, as I mentioned earlier. Those New games Zealand. have been postponed just a few days ago and an Asian team champion as well from 2018 and a silver medalist in 2016. And on the World Tour, she has most recently won the All England Open last year, beating Pompawi Cho Chu Wong. Five titles to her name. What about our opponents, Kim Gaon? Well, she has also achieved a fair bit in her career in the Yuba Cup. Last year, now she got third with Korea. Vanta Finland, third in the Sudirman Cup. 
second in the Asian Team Championships silver medal in 2020, Hello. and second in the black. Asia Mixed Team Championships in 2017. Red. It is red. That side. Receive. Have a good match. Bobby was listening and watching very keenly there for the ends, and uh, Kim has got what she wanted. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's been a huge factor, certainly today and yesterday, uh, this big arena, slightly drifty conditions, very obvious good and bad end. Um, Kim Guyen wants, wants a good start by the looks of things. Um, she's going to start on the far side of the court, which we've seen dominate so far today anyway, in both the singles and the doubles. Incredibly, two accomplished players who've uh, never faced each other before. So this will be fascinating to watch, unlike the other pairs. So, Nozomi Okuhara is from Nagano, which many of you might remember as a venue for the Winter Olympics many years ago, 27 years of age, 156 centimetres tall, and she is six in the world, a former world number one. And that was back in October 2019. So she's uh, won both the matches, was pushed by Su Wen Chi almost an hour against her, and beat and Captain Squirry of Germany pretty easily, did not play against Indonesia or France. Kim Guyan is 24, 172 centimetres tall from Ulsan. Uh, she was currently 19th in the world, and has been as high as 15th. That was almost uh, just over two years ago. So not too far away from each other in the rankings. And she's played every single match. Beat Lauren Lam, was pushed, perhaps surprisingly, by Tsang Wen Yu. And defeat from Akashi Keshev, that was a straightforward one. And also dropped a game against Lina Kostovson, but she has won every match so far. But Van Horenbeek is the Belgian umpire. And the service judge for Sydney Gallus from New Zealand. What are your thoughts on this one then, Bobby? Do you know, I was just thinking that myself. What am I expecting from today's performances? It's really difficult to know. I haven't actually seen Kim play much this week. Everyone knows Okuhara so well, of course. Uh, and we did have her on, on, uh, on court two yesterday. Uh, I love this, by the way. A little bow and a mm. thank you to every line judge just before she's about to serve. So respectful. Um, so they've never met and it makes it difficult to know how it's going to go. On paper, you'd have to go with Okuhara. She's the more accomplished, she's been there, she's done it, world number one, world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Korea, represented by Kim Gai Un. And on my left, Japan, represented by Nozomi Okuhara. Korea to serve. Lovol, play. But just getting back to your question, yeah. Chez, I think, I think Kim, Kim's going to be, uh, Encouraged by the performances of her teammates exactly. today already. You know, she's just seen Anse Young come through against the world best in match one, giving her confidence that she can do a similar job here against Okuhara. I mean... You also mentioned the team dynamic now, right? Because this was just a standalone singles match. Very different prospect from... I can't afford to lose this now. Well, Okuhara cannot afford to lose this. Exactly. The team are out. Yeah. Um, Japan have been in every semi-final stage since 2010. They've been in the last three finals, I think it is, at the Uber Cup. It's a big deal for them. 
number one in the team rankings as well, Japan. Three love. What a start here for Kim. Okuhara yesterday was very relaxed on the sort of poorer end of the court. Not phased by the prospect of, you know, defeat almost in some rallies because zero, zero for at five foot one, one three. both her and Yamaguchi, mm. to defend on a, on a weaker side of the court, you're going to get shots that are going to go past you and over the top. And quite frankly, there's just nothing you can do about it if you're only five foot tall. played brilliantly. Absolutely fantastically from Okuhara. Two, three. Just out. Okuhara. Japan have just, sorry, China have just beaten Thailand in the doubles next to us, and that's two zero up for them. Kim with a three-point lead here. Five, two. I wonder what the Chinese team are thinking about looking at this Japan versus Korea scoreboard. Mm because they're heavy favourites now to go through to the final after being two love up in that time. Wow, now that was odds on, on. You would have put almost everything on her making that shot. Three, five. Well, well. Well, you coached in badminton not to take a big swing at the net. And unfortunately, that's what Kim did there. Uh, the miss for Kim. Oh, unfaced. <laughs> what a <laughs> shot. She only deals with the harder shots there, uh, Bobby. Six, three. Well, the she, simple stuff. Well, she really built that rally well. She was just holding and firing into those deep rear corners. She got the short lift and what a dispatch. Oh. Incredible net shot from Izumi Okihara. Tight spinning net shot, it also oh, caught the net six. on the way down. Look at that. Okuhara on the run again, but defends so well. Unbelievable defense from Nozomi Okuhara. Almost Five, everybody in the world would be beaten by that attack early on in the rally. She was so late and finds her way out of trouble. Forces the error in the end. run of momentum for the Korean Eight, that's five. really she'll love because she hasn't really earned it the last couple of points a couple mm. of errors from Okuhara 
I mean, that was a nice drop shot. Well, nice drop shot, there's another one. Holding Okihara away. If Okihara had committed earlier, she would have just gone over the top of her. Versus China, an experienced campaign at 436 matches coming to this tournament. 330 wins, 106 losses. Well, that's a phenomenal record overall. Sixty one of the two hundred and forty four matches, double the number of matches she's lost. She's also a very good record. She maintains this two to three point lead. Ten seven. I wonder what that bit of kit she's wearing on her arm is mm. there, uh, Shez. It's, uh, unless it's the captain's armband today. I don't, you know, I don't know. It's <laughs> like in football. I saw her wear it uh, the other day as well. Yes. Eight, ten. One of her matches. Could be measuring movements and stuff like that yeah heart rate and uh, yeah. all that stuff i would have thought lead is now two make that one Nine. talked Ten. about how her record overall is good but she lost in the career open to pompawi in the semis that was a not a bad start and then the round of 16 in the career masters to this is kim i'm talking about her being tiao Surprisingly, in the opening round of the Asia Championships to Putri Usmawardani of Indonesia. Here's over. Eleven night interval. Only mixed bag for so far this year. But it is Kim who goes into the interval with a two point lead, 11 9 in game one. So that two-point lead with that end as well. It's all looking fairly good at the moment for Kim Gong. Yeah, it is. I mean, I wonder whether going to a third game might hamper the Korean a little bit. She's mm. worked really hard this week. This is her fifth match, I think you said. Yes. Nozomi Okihara has been rested. She's only played twice. I mean, she'll feel pretty fresh. <laughs> and she's been taken to three in a couple of those matches as well, hasn't she? Going. Oh, 
well. Okihara just tried a bit too much there. 13-9. The orthodox shot was on, but she tried something a little ambitious. Going well for Kim at the moment. 14, Need a five now. I can suddenly feel the tension in here. It's also very quiet, isn't it, down there? And I think us. that's why that Japanese crowd, led by their teammates, is just down in front of us. Muted, yeah. really, over the last sort of ten minutes. And I think, oh. well, the reason is. Kim Guyon is, yeah. is beating their former world champion. I mean, let, that's, that's first and foremost. However, Akihara will come back better in this second game. I'm sure she will. Yeah, we uh, were just talking about Kim's record this year. Okihara was out in the quarterfinals of the All England against Taitsu Ying. In the opening round against Ted Tuzar. Had to retire in that one of the Badminton Asian Championships. So, again. Back to her. Oh, great 2022 so far. And it's going very well for her. Kim Gohan. 69. She might have bought herself a little bit of a smile or something at this point. She's right in the zone, isn't she? She's yeah. focused. I mean, that uh, lift off the net, it didn't look like much, but just that element of skill caused Okuhara to be late. Short lift and then an easy attack in the end. She made it look good, Kim, but the hard work was done prior to that shot. Strange, though, Cher. She looks very frustrated with an error, but, exactly. but she's hitting some wonderful winners. It's just like business as usual. I was just about to say, you think she's the one who's 10-16 down. But the Koreans today have been in the zone and just really on it, haven't they? They have, I mean, it, it appears like she's got these high expectations, you know, and every, I mean, that was an unforced error and she hit miles out, so yes, you'll be frustrated, but that's one point in, what, this will be the 27th? Oh, she's got her on the ropes again. Excellent from Kim. Zero, zero, ten. That smash was so accurate. But you're right, she ought to be enjoying this more, and perhaps she is. She's just not showing it on her face. Poker. She's got a poker face. Were you someone that exhibited your delight at the situation, or were you, did you keep it all in? Um. Very good from Kim, while you mull over that one. Yeah, I'd like to think I was sort of... Oh. <laughs> it's all oh, going yeah. Kim's way, isn't it, right now? Superb, that flat lift. And this side of the court, so dangerous. I think I, I'd like to think I was cool and calm, but actually I probably wasn't. Because there I, are some who, who, you know, this pump every point, you know, but yeah, Jackson does that a lot. I do, a bit like Victor Butish, I don't go mad. You know, okay. I'm, not, I'm not a Carolina Marion by any stretch, but, <laughs> but I, I did like it when I felt hard done by on the court. So if, uh -huh. if, if there was a line call that I think my opponents cheated or the decision's gone the other way. It, it really seemed to focus me. Was there a me. glare? Yeah, I just, uh, wow. just... We'll come back to that, but Kim can do no wrong at the moment. That was quite unbelievable, actually. How did she go? That's twice in two rallies she's been caught flat-footed Okihara. She's two points away from taking a very, very good first game. Ten game points Okuhara is facing here to save. Game point, ten. Well, Okuhara yesterday 
managed to come through in straight games. So despite the endy conditions and all of that stuff, mm. she worked it out. She came through against a, a, you know, a decent opponent. Oh, that was exquisite, but few and far between of those, right? Yeah, and she's going to need pretty much nine more in a row just to draw level. Yeah. I mean, this match is surely inevitable that it's going to be a career lead this far up. The defence from Okihara, though. That's one thing you can say about both Yamaguchi and Okihara. They look like they're down and out in a rally and somehow yeah. they claw things back and find a way to neutralise that attack and get back in the rally. Wonderful shot if it's in. It no is challenge. Is that a challenge? No. no. I expected there to be a challenge yeah, there, but... First game won by Korea. Well, how good was that first Where? game, Bobby? And I th we've pretty much said that with every Korean game so far, haven't we? That they've won. Look at Okihara's oh. speech. Just planted, not moving there. And we saw that, what, four times in that game? That's very rare. So Kim is doing something right. And yes, you're absolutely right, Shez. I mean, wow, what a shot. It, <laughs> some, some days just go your way. And right yeah. now, for See, Korea... Unbelievable performance. So Second Nozomi game. Okuhara has it all to do Lovell. because Play. if she loses this match, Japan are stunningly out of the Yuba Cup finals. Kim Gayen just respectfully allowing Okuhara to do her respectful kind of thank you to all the officials. Biding her time. This is quite unbelievable, Shez, how, <laughs> how dominant Korea have been so far today mm. against the top women's team on paper in the world. So now, for those who may have not joined us from the start, I want to again just bring up no. the ends and, and what you've noticed throughout the week, what your observations have been. Well, Kim Gae won the toss and very obviously straight away I want that end of the court. Um, the far end, the one that Okuhara's on now. Yeah, she, yes. she got off to a good start because that is the better end to play on, particularly in singles. She's playing slightly into the drift, Okuhara, which will help her. She can hold the shuttle and fire into the rear corners without fear. She's got no worries about her length and lifts and clears going out the back. Whereas that happens very often on this side of the court from Kim. So that's Kim's challenge now. Playing with the drift, she's going to have to control that attack, be careful with the lifts and the clears. And it's going to benefit Okuhara here in a second. I would not be at all surprised 
to see something of a comeback. Two, four. And all this with a third game in mind. Well, not just a third game in mind now, but, but every game and every match yeah. at this stage for Japan yeah. is for the loss, mm. you know, or potentially for the win if they can get that far. But, you know, there are two matches down in the tie and there are a game down in this match. Surely that plays in your head. So important here. Three, two. Struggling here, looking a little bit disjointed. A couple more errors. A little bit late. Well judged in the end. Series over. Three, four. Exasperated. Okuhara at the moment. Oh, excellent from Kim. Kim wins this game, it's all over. Korea are through to the finals. Oh, great shot from Kim. Struggling with the length though, under no pressure. It's the faster end for her and it's difficult Six, to find the rear corners. Helps you can get right now, Okuhara. Well, she's found it this time, <laughs> that rear corner. Six, six, all. Shake of the head from Okuhara. Well in that one. Great shot from Okuhara. <laughs> I can do that too. Zero, from, a, from a player's perspective, Bobby, does it make it interesting or frustrating when you have different conditions on either end? Is it, is it good for you know good for the players who then in turn adapt? I know from, certainly from a spectator point of view, it's quite fascinating. For a player. Would you just like consistency on both ends? Uh, no, no I, I actually really love that kind of stuff. Right. Um, I, think, I think it depends what your strengths are. I think the more experienced players, and therefore typically older players, are able to cope with that a bit more because it, it almost becomes second nature that, mm. that you use it as best Eight, you can. Six. And you understand it more, you've seen it all before. Yeah. Younger players seem, seem to get a bit lost with understanding what that means and suddenly they probably say, you know, you've got to give that lift some height because the drift's going to take out anything quite flat. Or, right. And you think, well, it's not instinctive. So therefore you've got to think about it. Whereas, they get what they used to. Exactly yeah. that, yes. But also, I think, 
I like to think I'm quite a tactical, strategic, smart kind of player, mm. and therefore I'm trying to find any little thing that I can do to use to my advantage or, yeah. or be wary against playing against an opponent. So, so yeah, I mean, I love it, but others maybe, you know, would prefer it just to be dead simple. Well, she wishes it was dead simple right now, Okuhara. Seven. She Eight. leads by just one. Well, cross smash was slightly unorthodox from that position. She was quite late, Kim, and Okuhara was already on that side of the court, but it came off. So the number of those sort of shots not what for Kim on this end. Yeah, sadly for Kim Kai, and there's too many of those in this second Seven. game. Great cross block from Kim. But look how Okuhara gets everything back. I don't know how she does it. Really well played by Okuhara. And she's got Kim late now. But she's missed the net. Well, there have been one for each player. Give me points that they haven't taken. The momentum seemed to shift three times in that one rally. Look at that shot from Kim, and then how did Okuhara miss the net shot? What a straightforward kill. No, it was too low, wasn't it, by then? Too the, low. By the time she got there. And because there wasn't enough pace on the shuttle, it was kind of floating mm. in. Okuhara had to generate some push to get it over the net, which is perhaps the first time in the match she's had to have done that with the, with the shuttle. That was a long rally so far in this game, 29 shots. Zero, zero, bro. Riveting badminton at the Eight. moment. Great net shots from Okuhara. <laughs> Oh, in, wonderful. In. She needed that. She's got it in as well. And Okuhara leads at the interval here in game two, 11-9. Having to win this game, of course, with Kim winning the first game. Well, accuracy's been the key here. The shots that have gone deep into the corners have been like rally winners. And there's been so many that have gone out wide and out the back. Hey, there's a nice pack. Shares, we saw one earlier for Anse Second of the day, yep. <laughs> 35 degrees, according to... Uh, it's searing outside, isn't it? Oh, two. Yeah. Wait, Air conditioning in here, of course. It's cool in here, though, isn't it? But yeah. we're not down in the court. Yeah. So now the lead that Okuhara has is a, is a fairly slender one. You contrast that with Kim was very comfortable at the interval of her first game. Yeah, it's interesting, and I think I think the difference in score in this game, Kim has made so many mis like errors outside yeah. the lines. She has. That it could have been 11-8 up to her at the break if those shots had you know stayed in court. You don't know. Mm. Okuhara does in the second half of game two, which she has to win well, to keep Japan's nine. faint hopes alive at the moment. They are under the cross a little bit. Good work. 
from Kim. Serzerva. 10 12. Solid smash we saw earlier in the women's singles from this side of the court. So smash it down. Your opponents back outside were really effective. The Japanese team there trying to do their bit. Short, but the defense on the cross block from Kim was fantastic. It's gone wide. Well, it might have come back into court yeah, somehow. It did look like it came back in. What a rally this is turning out to be. defense but it's not enough brilliant that swung so many different times didn't it the momentum the lead is now for okuhara Four, three, pretty good position here ten. the teammates enjoying that <laughs> 41 shots out ready by far the longest one so far More the lead that she would have wanted. Okuhara. A little bit earlier on. She will take that now. Korean teammates watching with interest. Building this lead. It's now up to five. 15. Kim knows she has to make that move soon. Stop this run of points. Cut that deficit. Make that deep. Serve Zerva. 11 15. Yeah, she was scrambling at the net. Okuhara and the lift. Meant she was out of position. Good work from Kim. She's going to have to keep that up. Oh, oh she's found oh, a winner. Oh, oh. That's a winner that was as well. Okuhara. Sixteen. Eleven. The number now. That's what she is. She requires to win this, and how many points she's ahead of her opponent. Okuhara to level this match. Take it to a third. It's just a long end. It's gone long. Seventeen. It really has swung around again for Okuhara, hasn't it? She wants to win this in two, she has to make do something now. Kim. points now the lead. It's looking very good here for Okuhara. She 
really didn't look in the match at the start, did she, Okihara? That opening yeah. game was so dominant of him. Swung completely the other way, isn't it? Yeah, there'll be a lot to discuss with coaching staff at the interval and the change of ends in a minute. Kim just wants this one finished, I think. <laughs> 20 Nine game points, game points now. <laughs> well, post interval, it's been brilliant for Nozomi Okuhara, who has won this now very comfortably, having back. led only by two at the break. 21. She takes game two, 21-11. Yeah, a lot of work to do now for Kim. The, like mentally, that's going to give Okuhara such a boost. Mm. She knows she's going to change ends again at the interval in the third. She's going to go back onto that better side of the court to finish the match. How can Kim get a significant lead here? Moving to game three here. Dominant wins for either one of these players, each of these players at that far end. And of course, they will swap halfway through this game. Final game, awful. Tough to call this one, Bob, in this third game, but the momentum you feel is with Okuhara right now. Yeah, it is, and a big challenge now for Finn Gaham. I'm really interested to know if that coach of hers is Sung Ji Hyun, who is still up there in Korean rankings, yeah. top 20 in the world, but she was a former great. I mean, she was number two in the world a few years back, and. Crucially, she's been here, she's done that. She's won the Uber Cup for Korea, that 2010, part of that 2010 winning team. And she'll be a great help to Kim Gaon if that is still sat in her corner. Hard to see without... One ball. Well, she's wearing a face mask. Well, given that in her third choice, singles player Sim Jin, who's further down the rankings, an interesting choice. Killed off there by Kim, nicely. Two, one. We're talking about the kind of leads that you want at the interval, right, Bobby? Because you then have to switch ends, don't you? Yeah, she's going to need to take advantage here on the better side of the court, uh, is Kim gae -yun. She's going to need a really healthy lead give herself chance and to make the Zomi, let's say she goes in front 11-5 at the break. Okuhara then needs to win 16 points in the second half before 
Kim makes another 10. So that's 26 points of badminton after the break. That is excruciating in these conditions. But that's what she's going to need to force Okihara to do here if she wants to take the match. So she thinks she'll be, she should be ahead, yeah. and she thinks she will hit some winners. So then you start going for those winners, you're going for those lines, and you make an error. And suddenly, you're questioning things, right? Yep. There's another one. Four, two. Kim for the break and then go into that change of ends she'll be feeling really confident and suddenly the match is really turned on its head right because mm. they'll be confident in their doubles pairing in the fourth matchup with Chima and Matsumoto so that could also be a win for Japan and then suddenly it's two all, two all and everything's looking so different that's why this is a crucial Crucial match. She's got the three point lead here, Okuhara. It is not going well for Kim at the moment. Okuhara is on a roll. Four points that lead. Seven, three. Five in a row, I should say. It was 4 3 earlier. Desperately needed that one, Kim. Four, nine. It's so hard because if, even if. Kim wins the next five points and goes 11-9 in front. I'd still fancy Okuhara to take the end of that from that better side of the court. 
Trouble here. A lot of trouble for Kim. Good disguise from Okuhara. So much time to hold that forehand to go over the top. a good lead going into the second half of game three. Okuhara, it's 11-4 up here. No trouble. Hey Kim, how is she going to turn this around at the other end now? I find it fascinating. It happens in all sports, right, but how encouraged were the Korean team and Korean fans for what was happening out here when Kim took that opening game yeah. so confidently and we thought Four, wow two, you know Korea could do this seconds. suddenly Four, I'm looking two, at it thinking Okuhara is likely to take the third now good solid that? doubles pair coming up next yeah. and then it all comes down to potentially Sayaka Takahashi taking on Sim Ju Jin and arguably Takahashi has the edge yeah Agree with that. And Japan could do it again in another final. Four. All to play for at the end of game three, the change of ends. Now let's see how Kim reacts here. She needs to do something pretty special to stay in this. Shots in a row, that's quite Six. uncharacteristic yeah. of Okihara. Bobby, maybe this is the better end. <laughs> I just wonder if she's getting a bit nervous. Surely not. It's still a good five point lead, isn't it? Okihara. Yeah. One wide. Three in a row here. Much better. Kim Bowen has suddenly come alive. Yeah. That would be massively frustrating. She's done so well to let her down, let herself yeah. down with a serve. Again from the Korean side. Yeah, both Japan and Korean teams really loving the excitement of this, and why not? That lead is now three. It's seven points in the interval. It's 
to just the ends that we were talking about. It almost seems it's shifted. Yeah, I think it's it maybe got in both players' heads, heads. <laughs> and uh, the opposites happened. Oh, what a shot! Excellent, excellent work there from Kim. Talk about momentum, shifting completely. Well, this is fascinating. 6-1, she's outscored her opponent since the interval. I feel like I wouldn't be surprised by anything at this stage. <laughs> I feel like if Okuhara wins the next nine points and takes the match, yeah, OK. But if Kim does the same, well, yeah, OK. I really can't sort of forecast what's happening here. Oh, that's tremendous. Tremendous from Kim. Two flats from Okuhara. And it was well read by Kim onto her racket. And what a space, a ton of space cross court to find. In that first singles match between Yamaguchi and Ansio, we talked about the confidence being sucked out of Yamaguchi. It almost feels like the same thing's happened now with Okuhara. I can't quite put my finger on it. Is it the occasion? You know, is, it, is she suddenly feeling like, oh yeah, I'm in a Uber Cup semi-final and we're about to lose and I really have to win here? Or is she too relaxed, thinking she's on the better end, she's got a healthy lead and it's just going to be easy? And it's far from easy. Whatever it is. It is indisputable that Kim has just clawed back a seven-point deficit. Well, that's the one thing about, about badminton, but about all sports as well. That's the one thing I did not expect to happen when Okuhara was, what, 11-5 up yeah. at the break? 4, 11-4, yeah. 11-4. That's the last thing I thought, would it be 12-all in, you know, five minutes' time. She has gone in front, Kim Gatton. She has won nine points of the last ten. That is, and, and on the end, the, really, the whole week has been the more difficult end. This is incredible. This entire tie has been like this. It's been absolutely riveting to watch. This entire tie relies on this last half a game at this stage. What a what a point that is! Sorry to interrupt you, Bobby, but the defence on that, she had no right to make that. Kim got in. It was at her body, she just reacted. And it went over the top. And look at that. At the beginning of this game three, she couldn't find the court. And now she's hitting winners in pure reaction. <laughs> now some of the Koreans on their feet just now. It's amazing how this has changed. Oh, it's going that, wide. Was, uh, that was going out, wasn't it? Oh, what a oh, shot! Shot again. Well, belief is the word. Kim Gaeun. Suddenly, believe she can win this. 15, 12. Just to repeat again, since she was 4 11 down. I'd love to think that, you know, she's lulled Okuhara into some false <laughs> sense of plans, security. <laughs> you know, yeah, master grand scheme that she's had, but that's absolutely not the case. She's just suddenly filled with confidence and playing some of the best badminton of her life. Desperately needed that. As if to remind ourselves that actually that's what's supposed to happen on this end of the court. Masaki Matsutomo in the crowd. I say crowd, it's the Japan team leading the crowd into celebrations here. 
11 points of the last 13 have gone to Kim. This is incredible. 16, 13. Breathing hard, but yeah. the fist was pumped. Again, that was there for the taking, wasn't it? She's done three point lead. Five points from not just the match, but the entire tie, and by the way, a place in the finals tomorrow. Painting everything. 15, 15. Well, I, I can't quite believe what I'm seeing, if I'm honest, Jess. This is a phenomenal performance and a huge comeback. She led at the start, she was fully in charge of the match, and then she went so far behind. I thought, well, it's all over and it's gone to plan, and obviously, you are a former world champion. Four books and all that. In form book is going to cruise through. Japan will probably win now. Yeah. It'll all be hype. Korea were never in the match in the first place. And suddenly, She's dragged Korea back on top. Guevara <laughs> doing well here. <laughs> oh, challenge. Korea challenges I, I think that might have well have been out, but yeah, well worth the chance. Something caught the line. The feathers yeah. definitely caught the line. Yeah. Did any of the cork catch the line? Mind you, the way things are going at the moment for Kim, you just wouldn't put it past the and I, and I'll guy to say, actually, that was in. I think I've had four or five <laughs> challenges wrong today as well, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call, stay out of this one. I'm gonna call that out in the hope that I'm wrong. Are there more twists in this tale? 14, Kim Gaian's looking a bit tired. Yeah. That's my nervousness that. now. That's my worry now. Okihara's the fresher of the two players being rested this week. How much has Kim Gaian got left? That was well in. That was a poor, poor yeah. decision. Surprised that she. Completely misjudged that one now. Has this just shifted again? 15, She's got a two point cushion here, Kim. The last couple of points, this is the first time that Kim's had two in a row. Sorry, Okuhara has had consecutive points since the interval. 13 4. Kim has outscored her since that interval. Oh, she's gone over the top again. Brilliant from Kim. Oh. Suddenly, the crowd hushed. <laughs> Such an important point. <laughs> it's gone Kim wrong. Has got it. That has gone. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pumped 15, fist. 15. Three away from opponent, three away from winning this match and the tie. Well, it might sound obvious that better teams come through the tournament and you see better matches towards the end, but this is the most excited I've been all week. Uh, this is incredible. You stole the words out of my mouth. Exactly how I feel that, Bobby. This has been so good to watch. Okuhara. Oh, it's gone wide! It's gone wide from Okuhara. The finish line is close, is close. She can almost taste it, Kim. So can her teammates. I've got a good feeling here, Chez. 
Scott. We were talking earlier about Kim Gayen leading, beating the former world champion. Why isn't she more excited? She just looks business as usual. Well, that's the mentality she needs now, because if it was me out there, I'd panic. <laughs> I'd, I'd see really? that finish line and I'd start thinking, I've got to win it. I've got to hit a winner now and, and finish it off. Game face there still from Kim. Mixes up the serve. Still has three points on her opponent. Bit of panting going on there from Okahara. So, she's even two miles perhaps on that shot. The entire rally, I think, <laughs> it was very sketchy, wasn't it? Close, isn't it? Play. But Van Hornbeck says, get on with it. What a time to hit that. Look at the Korean team as well. On their feet. Van Boren, point. Van Boren point. He says match point. Final point. It's final point. Yes. It's for a place in the in the Uber Cup final. This point. Has Kim Gayun ever played a more important point in her life? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm holding my breath here, Shez. You and me both. Oh, she's still fighting. Oh. I can't speak. Oh. He's got that! Oh my yeah, god! Points. What have I just seen? Unbelievable! What a way to win it! Kim Gaon! Okuhara has just stood there! Mobbed by the Korean team. Everybody's on the court. They haven't even finished the match officially. <laughs> this is unbelievable in Bangkok. Bobby and I both rose to our feet in amazement and to salute what has been one of the outstanding Yuba Cup matches. Korea have been magnificent throughout today and they're entering their ninth final. But Bobby, what have we just witnessed here? Tell me. I've just seen Akane Yamaguchi and Nozomi Okuhara get beaten in the Yuba Cup semi-finals. The one result I didn't expect to see today was 3-0 Korea. It was a kill from Okuhara. It was to, to win the rally and, and move things on and somehow Kim reacts. Look at Shin Yutsung Chang, look at the whole Korean team. Unbelievable scenes. You, my friend, have just gone viral because that is going to be replayed again and again and again, that point at the end. What a match, what a turnaround for Kim ga -un who was 4-11 down at the interval in that third game. She has beaten Nozomi Okuhara 21-12, 11-21, 21-16 .21, in some of the most absorbing badminton you'll ever see. Just take a look at that scorecard. Look at that, because it started with a fantastic match. An Se Young defeated Akane Yamaguchi in just, it took 63 minutes. And then Matsuyama and Shida, we thought they might try and pull it back, but we, Lee and Shin, such a great pair, aren't they? They won 21-17, 21-16 in 45 minutes. And in what could well be one of the most remarkable turnarounds in badminton, certainly this tournament has seen. Kim Gaon has beaten Nozomi Okuhara, 21, sorry, 12-21, 21-11, 21-16. And Korea have beaten Japan and they've done it in stylish fashion. Well, uh, 
before we get ahead of ourselves again, China through that semi-final as well against Thailand this morning in the Uber Cup. Korea-China final tomorrow. I mean, you can see the draw on the screen. I want to talk more about what we've just yeah. seen because I feel almost speechless. I don't know what to say. That was unbelievable, Shez. I got a scorecard wrong, Max. Well, <laughs> it's just been... It, the tension. Yeah. The atmosphere in here, it's just gone mad. We've loved it, haven't we? Every minute of this. Every single minute. And, I mean, I just want to say well done, Korea. What three performances. They were focused. They were disciplined. But they were also positive in their badminton. And uh, incredible. Well, if you love that, you're going to love this. Thomas Cup action semi-finals this evening as Indonesia take on Japan. So thank you very much for joining us.